So guys, let's apply the K rule which we saw in the last video to this exercise. So we got that mixture of 75% hydrogen gas and 25% of uh, nitrogen gas. They tell you smaller, well, you may suppose that our volume is the same. Uh, they are contained in a tank which is pressurized to 800 atmospheres and minus 70 Celsius. They tell you estimate the specific volume, so specific volume on liters, how many liters you have per unit mole, using K rules. So first thing first, let's check out the critical properties on each gas. Nitrogen gas, you have these. Hydrogen gas, you have these ones. Now, probably you were wondering why we saw the Newton law. And if you haven't seen that, go and check out the Newton's correction video, because we're going to that we're going to do that correction, which is here. Make the correction for hydrogen gas is essentially just at 8 to the temperature, critical temperature, and 8 to the critical pressure in atmospheres. So I got these values corrected. Instead of using 33 and 12, we're going to use 41 and 20. Now, nitrogen gas is not going to be corrected because it's okay. Nitrogen gas is relatively huge compared to hydrogen gas. So we do not need to actually correct them. And yeah, essentially let's do that. We have all the data already and let's do it. We're going to calculate the pseudo critical temperature of the mixture. So we need to know that the composition, which we have here, and the critical values on each substance. Composition of hydrogen gas will be 75%. Composition of the nitrogen gas is 25%. The critical value we just corrected is 41, and the critical value we just cut from tables, or which actually was here, is this value. So just do this operation, and you got your new critical temperature for this mixture using K rule. And for this pseudo critical pressure, is exactly the same. Compositions times critical value corrected times critical value. And you have this, you substitute the data, do the operations, and you get 24 atmospheres. And that's so easy. Of course, you may use as many as you want. You may have also methane, you may have water vapor, you may have also water, what else? Butane, whatever you wanted to add, you could add it. But we're just using two example, uh, examples right now. So let's go and continue. Once we got the critical temperatures, we're not done yet, guys. So if you were to report that, you were going to report that incorrectly. Let's calculate the reduced temperature and the uh, reduced pressure, which is right here. 203 Kelvin divided by 62 Kelvin. And you got this value. 800 atmosphere. Why am I using these values? Because they give it to me. 870. 70. Remember, we have minus 70, if you wanted to calculate that to Kelvin, you will have 203 Kelvin, which is here. Probably you didn't notice that. And if you did, great for you. You are very concerned with the temperature, which must be absolute, and that's good. Now, I substitute the pressure, divided by the critical, or the pseudo-critical one, and I got these new values. And now, we can actually say that we have a mixture of gases and we can treat it as any gas and do the normal procedure so let me go and check out find C value in the compressibility charts for this set of values well first thing first the reduced pressure is 30, 31, 32, 33 is right here so I make this line the reduced temperature is 3.26 so it's something between 3 and 3.5 so something around here and I intersect them. Once I intersect it, go vertically to this axis and I will find out that my C value or compressibility factor for this mixture using K rule is about 1.90. And that's everything guys. I am really really happy that you're done with this section. Now it's time to go to our last section, which is enthalpy and other heat effects.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.